Welcome to this video where we would be discussing about the exception handling features in Spring Boot. We would do this in three steps. We would really want to be hands on at, in 28 minutes. So what we'll do first is we'll set up a simple project. I mean this is a project that we developed for one of the courses we did recently and in there we have a lot of exception handling features built in. So that's number one. We'll set up the code so it would be like five to ten minutes where we would set up the whole thing. Second step, we would look at the default exception handling features in Spring Boot. So Spring Boot by default does a lot of things. It configures errors and all that kind of stuff. So we'll see the default exception handling in Spring Boot. The third thing we'll do is we'll develop a little bit of custom exception handling of our own. So let's get started with step one and we would get to steps two and three. Welcome to this step one where we're going to import an existing project into our workspace. The project that we are going to use is something which we created for our course on Spring Boot uh, tutorial for beginners. This is a course on developing uh, simple REST services with Spring Boot. As you can see, it has great ratings as well as it's a course of about six hours in duration. I mean, 38 videos and it's an excellent course. You can look at the reviews as well. In this course, we developed a complete REST application step by step. What we'll do is we'll take the zip, we'll import it, and then we would use that to understand the concept at hand. How do I import that project in? Down below the video, which you are watching right now in the description, there'd be a link to the zip, which has the code for the project that we would want to import in. So just click that zip, download the zip into a folder and extract it to a folder. So if you are on Windows, probably you can extract that zip to C colon slash uh, some folder in there. And if you are on Mac, do the same thing. Just put it in some folder and then you can go ahead and import it using Eclipse. So file, import. So I've taken the zip, unzipped it to a folder and now I'm saying, file import existing Maven projects and I would want, I'm pasting in the folder path. So I'm pasting in the path where that particular folder is in. You can also browse to it as well. So you can do browse and select that folder. Once I do that, this would come in. So you would have a pom.xml which is coming in. Now I can go ahead and say finish. You'd see that the Eclipse would complete the import of the project and this project would come in. So this project, if you look at it, contains a lot of code. So there is a lot of Java files as well as resources, tests. Once the application has imported fine, you should see a folder structure similar to what we are seeing in here. And also you should see a few or quite a few Maven dependencies come in as well. So you'd see that there would be a host of Maven dependencies which would be there. So that's a clear sign that you got everything working and you are ready to run the application. So how do you run the application? So it's main Java, go to com in 28 minutes Spring Boot, Spring applic student application. So it's a typical Java application. So all that you need to do is run as Java application. This specific application uses a embedded server. That basically means Tomcat is also built in into the application. All that you need to do is right click run as Java application and it would launch up the Tomcat server with our application deployed. For more details about this specific application, which we just launched up, you can visit our website, springboottutorial.com slash creating rest service with Spring Boot. This article is a long article actually taking you through the entire journey of creating the rest service that you are looking at right now. So if you are interested in more details, I would recommend you to look at the description and click the link there. So you should find a link with www.springbootshutorial.com. Just click the link and you should be able to understand the details of how to invoke the REST services and things like that. If you're new to Spring or Spring MVC or Spring Boot or Eclipse or Maven or JUnit or Mockito, in the article, you should find references as well. These references are basically one hour video courses on all the popular frameworks. So, these are very popular videos with more than 100,000 views. So I'm sure you'll find them useful. Now that we have the application set up and also we can see that the server has started up, we are ready to get into step. Now let's move to step two, where we would be discussing the default exception handling features in Spring Boot. Using a utility called Postman, this is a cool tool to execute REST services. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go, like, I've started up the application, so I can try and hit a non-existing URL. So I'm 
trying to hit a non-existing resource. What I mean by non-existing resource is one which is not there at all. So what is, what is the response I get back? I'm not getting a page not found. I'm not getting anything else. I'm getting a proper HTTP response back. The HTTP response is 404, not found. And the response contains the details as well. It says, you executed the request at this timestamp. The error is not found. The message is no message is available. And the path you have tried to hit is this. So it's coming back with clear message. So when I'm doing something wrong, so when I'm going to a non-existing URL, it's not failing completely. What it's doing is returning a good error response back. That's because of Spring Boot. So Spring Boot by default provides good exception handling on things like this. We have this student service, which is the one which is providing all the data. And now we would want to look at some of the, what would happen if I throw a runtime exception from here? What if uh, exception is thrown from one of the services? What would happen? So what I'll do is I'll pick up one of the services which we have already created and make it throw an exception for a specific student thing. So for example, let's pick up this student, retrieve student uh, service. What I'm trying to do is retrieve all the courses for a specific student. So you get a proper response back. What I'll do is if I'm asking for courses for student one, I'll make it through an exception. In retrieve courses, what I'll do is if student ID dot equals ignore case, I'm saying the ID of the current student, student one, then I'll make it through a runtime exception. Throw new, we want to see what would happen if an exception is thrown from the service. Runtime exception of something went wrong. I saved it. Uh, I have developer tools installed, so it would automatically pick up the change and reboot the application or reload the application. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's done. So now I can go ahead and execute the service again. So we are sending it for student one. It will throw an exception, I guess, if it worked fine. So that's cool. So you can see that I've thrown an exception and the application is not crashing at all. What it's doing is really giving you back a proper response. So it's saying internal server error has happened. So 500 internal server error. I mean, you should never return a 500 internal server error back as an exception ending response, but okay. So now I have a timestamp. The status is 500 and it says runtime exception is thrown and the message that we gave inside that went in here as well. So the path you're trying to do is this. So it's giving you good default exception handling. I mean, this is really good stuff that Spring Boot is already doing. But if you really want to customize stuff, you can do that too. The last thing we want to look at is creating custom error handling. Creating custom error handling with, actually this is custom error handling with Spring MVC, but it really uh, is applicable to all Spring Boot application. Most of them are on Spring MVC anyway. So whatever you're using here is a controller advice feature, which is one of the things which is present in Spring MVC. So this is one of the annotations which um, Spring MVC provides where you can provide advice on all the controllers. So all the generic stuff. So you, if you want to implement common error handling, um, if you want to implement co anything in common across multiple controllers, then you can use this some thing called controller advice. So whatever a controller advice you add in would be applicable to all the controllers in your uh, application. So I'm adding in a controller advice called default exception handler. And I'm specifying and using an annotation called that exception handler and specifying which exception it handles. So this handles exception.class, which means all kinds of exceptions. So whether you throw a runtime exception or some, anything which is a subclass of exception that would match this. So add exception handler that specific ex, exception.class, what we are doing is we are creating a new error message structure. So what we are doing is we are saying, we, we want to create a new error message, ex.get message, comma this. So this error message structure I have defined in here. So I've defined a simple error message structure which contains message and details, message and details. And yeah, it just contains the getters and setters and a default constructor as well. It's a simple Java bean. So it contains two things, uh, basically the message and the details. Other than that, what we have done is created a controller advice class with a method which is tagged with at exception handler. What I'm doing in here is taking the new error message, creating it and returning it back. So what we want to do is whenever we return a response back, so here is the exception response back. What we want to do is we want to return specific status back. We want to return a status, let's say of internal server error or something of that kind. 
In these kind of situations, it's useful to use a response entity. It, this is a cool way of saying, I want to give this response back. So let's uh, execute the request right now. So I'm saving it and I'm executing it right now. Let's do it again. So there you go. You see that something went wrong. What else do you want to add in? So something went wrong came from the exception that we defined. And what else do you want is coming from here. So you can add other details that you would want um, service consumers to know about. So you can actually create these kind of exception handlers for specific exceptions. So not only for exception, if you want to uh, create it for us, like, for example, you have a custom exception of your own, you can create exception handler for that and specifically customize this to whatever you would want. It's cool thing to have a common error message structure across uh, the s different services. So I would really recommend you to def identify what are the things that your service consumers would want to know. So put all those details in your error message. So here, for example, I have only a couple of details, but there might be other things that you would, your consumers might want to know about when there's an error. So you can add all these details in here. And if there are for a specific exception, you want to change this, all that you need to do is define another method for that specific exception and for that specific exception that exception handler would be called and what we looked at in here is how do you customize your error response so we saw that we kind of uh, give back the error response based on this structure enough and not the default structure which was provided by spring boot and the other thing which we also looked at is how to customize the status so if you looked at this response this would have a status of 500 internal error for a different thing, let's say you want to give a different error, so status, so HTTP status dot, if you just want to say something is bad request, you can do that too. So I just say bad request, wait for the server to reload. Okay, done, send, and you now see 400 bad request in the status of this. So in here, you can customize the structure of your response, the status of your response, and all that kind of stuff, and what kind of exception you would want to give what response back. So all that kind of customization is possible through this uh, exception handler, which is using the controller advice. So what we have looked at in this specific video is step one, we set up a simple application so that we have an example that we can play around with. We looked at the default exception handling that um, Spring Boot provides. So when you ex execute a non-existing URL or when you throw an exception from your services, by default, Spring Boot provides a good structure for the error responses. And what we looked at at the end of this thing is how to customize that response. How do you make sure, like create a structure, error response structure of your own and how do you customize the response status that you set? At in 28 minutes, our focus is on making you an expert at Spring Boot. We have created a complete website on Spring Boot at www.springbootshutorial.com. The link in the description of video would take you to a page where you find details of all the courses, videos, and the articles we have created on Spring Boot. If you love our videos, you would love our courses too. Our courses have great reviews on Udemy. You can see some of the reviews in here. And there are also articles on basics of Spring Boot, auto configuration, startup projects, startup parent, less services, web application, all the code examples. We have Maven projects which are present, which you can directly import into Eclipse and start running them and other references as well. This page would be a great start for you to become an expert on Spring Boot. You might also want to visit our website www.in28minutes.com all other courses other than Spring Boot as well. Thank you for all the support you are providing us. We would not have grown to 52,000 on Udemy. We would not have such great reviews on courses on Udemy without your support. We would not have been able to grow to 28,000 subscribers and more than 3 million views without your support. We want you to learn and make best use of all the courses that we have. Good luck and I will see you in the next video or the course. Until next time, here's Ranga from In28 Minutes signing off.